welcome to the Nuclear Reactor, and today we'll be reacting to part 10 of the What If Rat It's Turned Good series. It looks like we're getting to the end of it, uh, but I can't uh, still wait to do all the other what ifs, but I can't think anything will top this. Uh, the What If Rat It's series is just so cool, and I love the R&R &R series now that uh, follows this. So I guess we'll just get started. Say it ain't so, Masako. Nope. Hey guys, Master Collects here. And well, here we go. The first What If Week of 2018, and we started off with a bang. Part 10 of the classic What If series, which is fast approaching its first anniversary come April, back in said month, we actually set out to answer a simple question. What if Raditz turned good? Since then, it has spawned so much love, such interesting new characters, and generated so much hype behind it. So many people hey. were real. I mean, I wish it were real too, Buddy. it's just really grown on me. And it really gets one of the most underutilized characters in Dragable a chance to have his own story. A mm -hmm. I think that's why I really liked it, because I know I just didn't get my fill of Raditz, if you know what I mean. Like, Thank you, Toriyama. Thanks a blooming lot. In the past nine entries, we've seen Raditz actually sort things out with his brother, become his own person, master Super Saiyan, have a spat with Vegeta, resolve it, and then have another one again. He's really been through the mills, and not to mention, have his own family to boot. And he still gets to keep his trademark hairstyle, so I would call that a win for Raditz. And thank you all so much to everyone who shared the fan art for this scenario. And if you actually wish to share it or actually see some examples, you can check out the fan club over on DeviantArt. Mm. I'll leave the link to it right here and in the description. Together, we can all witness the artistic resurrection of Raditz. <laughs> or at least give him a much more interesting life, whichever comes first. So, let's recap. <laughs> I in love this guy. Part, he makes Lawrence me actually... Because normally I don't like theory videos. Really showing what just because of how do. boring she they are. But he keeps in the me in. Six tournament, only succumbing to the likes of Hit. Because to be fair, if your name's not Goku, you would have probably lost a Hit anyway. So realistically, in terms of a scenario, there's nothing too egregious to change here. We also saw Vegeta's revenge against Raditz beginning <laughs> to form. We've not been sure about exactly what he's up to, only that he's been training. Has he got something up his sleeve? But until hmm. then, we must get cracking. Part 10, or the finale for now, of What If Raditz Turned Good. I've Let's done go. like four videos tonight. Point, I'm sorry, Goku guys. I'm kind of tired. It's 3.40 uh, in the, in the morning, but the I'm going to get this one out, we get this one done, and then and head to bed. To but so, so much for that, I just couldn't. So I had to do no, another one of now, these. I the love them so much. Is what happens in the future. We still get future Mike because in all of the what if stories this one will this be point, scheduled to go out uh, on two, Tuesday I've kept the future trunks timeline the same as it was to keep some kind of constant going through and actually honestly looking back on it I kind of regret that decision because there was so much potential to have future ranch and future raditz and what that could have happened that scenario I I lament that choice now looking back on it dang it now I really want a time machine and if you think that Raditz is shocked about all of this, that they don't exist in this timeline, don't be. He's already aware of this anomaly from when Future Trunks came back to the present the first time round. But it's still a sobering reality for the Saiyan nonetheless, actually seeing it in person. This is a place that where he died and he remained the same stubborn coward that he once was. Nothing changed. That must be mm. so sickening for him. Anyway, there's no time for technicalities here because we got to tussle with the likes of Goku Black. Naturally, like in the original story, it all comes down to rock, paper, scissors with Raditz getting the win and fighting Goku Black first. Thinking, this will be a double, like the last time they battled in the present. Bit of thing with Super Saiyan Blue, it'll all be done, they can go home for tea. <laughs> At first, things seem pretty even, but then we get the Super Saiyan Rose transformation and things begin to go south for Raditz. And he ends up with an energy blade mm -hmm. in the chest. Ooh, that's got a sting. Oh, like Vegeta did. Arose by any other name. He is promptly thrown to the ground and is Okay, that's just creepy how he does that. I know he's Goku in DBZA, but seeing him do that is just out of the picture for the time being. Things continue like they do in the original timeline. 
The only difference here is that when Raditz regains consciousness, he saves the day with a god double Sunday instead of Vegeta doing a god final flash. This saves Goku and Trunks at the cost of his consciousness again. It looks like this might be the end for Raditz, but fortunately, Future Mai comes in and saves the day with her team and gets him out of there with thanks to some smoke Good. grenades. By miracle of miracles, they're able to escape the likes of Goku Black and Zamasu. And this just goes to show that, in my opinion, Future Mai is one of the best badasses of the entirety of Super. The gang are able to get back to the time machine and head back to the present, so that means they can regroup and let Bulma help them recover. After informing Beerus and Whis of the whole situation, going to the present day Zamasu and then completely offing him with that whole cool Hakai thing, they're then ready to go back <laughs> that was to cool, wasn't it? To and try that and was one of my again. favorite parts. Now that they finished off the present day Zamasu, they think, with the way multiverse theory works, that Zamasu will be gone from that future, Goku Black will be gone, and then everything will be hunky dory, and then Trunks can get back to normal. They ask Bulma mm, if she can come along sorry. with them, something she can get to see the future, think it'll be all fine and dandy, but. Unfortunately, she tells them all that she's a bit too busy with a secret project that Vegeta's got her on. But before Raditz can get angry, saying, What? You're helping Vegeta? How dare you? Trunks' life is on the line here. How dare you prioritize otherwise? Dr. Breeze comes in and eases the tension, saying yeah. that he can finish up things here with Vegeta's secret project. Ah, oh, don't worry at all, daughter. I can take care of that blot thingy he's working on. They don't have time to dwell, though, and Bulma agrees to let her father finish up here. No, he's he'll trying to get his Uzaru to form again. Difference. But as Cell said, multiverse well, Super Saiyan 4. The second trip doesn't Damn it. any better than the first one, with Raditz... He just had to ruin that. Oh, that's all he had to say. Freaking Blitz waves. They all have to try and survive, get back to the time machine, and go back to the present to try and regroup. Again. Yes, As I don't know how I remember that from the Dragon Ball uh, GT, but... And as they're thinking of all these plans, Ranch and Kid Trunks overhear all of this going on. Ranch is quite curious to see what the future is like. And so he's in his thing canonized GT, basically. They don't exist in that reality, and that hits Ranch like a sort freight of. train. Kid Trunks squeezes her hand in solidarity, akin to what she did with him in the previous part of this What If. After Goku finally recovers, he begins to learn the Mafuba by either just trying to figure out what he can learn himself and then going to Master Roshi to learn the technique specifically. As he's doing that, Raditz heads off to the Room of Spirit in Time to try and get in some training and get more powerful after being defeated by Rose Goku Black. And this time, Raditz doesn't destroy the chamber like a certain uh. prince did. They all head back to the future, and this time, Raditz tells Goku to bring the talisman along with them this time, and to take the urn with them from the time machine. Because remember, Raditz is a lot smarter than Goku, and remembers these kinds of things. So, he would make sure that Goku didn't forget, because he's his brother. He will call him out on that kind of stuff. We now have Raditz good, all good, that up from pissed back to me that off Zenkai, when they were double Zenkai. Okshi holding his own against Rose Goku Black. Zamasu approaches Goku, not knowing what any of these trinkets are, and Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue in order to defend himself for a little bit. And hey, why don't we just throw in Kaioken Blue as well? Because that will look really cool. Thanks to this new power, he's able to knock Zamasu down long enough so that means he can get in position and activate the Mafuba properly. And this time, the Mafuba succeeds! <laughs> Zamasu is trapped inside of the urn and he's not going anywhere. Goku Black can sense Zamasu's energy disappear and he's trying to get away mm -hmm. thanks to Goku's instant transmission, but Raditz isn't giving him a chance to escape. Good. Goku looks down at the urn very intensely, thinking whether the seal will hold. It does. Just. Goku arrives right next to Trunks, telling him to take this urn far, far away, bury it, and keep watch on it and let no one see it. He then instant transmissions back to his brother, mm -hmm. and they then face down against Goku Black. This being Dragon Ball, we've got to have a little bit of a flourish here. Mm -hmm. Raditz pulls out a little trinket he'd been keeping for such an occasion. The Patara earrings from the Boo Arc. Goku is shocked to see that really? he still has these. And Raditz confidently says, Well, I believe that we'd enter a situation like this again knowing you. And I think this is bad, so... Want to do it? Goku nods enthusiastically. And together oh, they put on the right. earrings and reform It was Radito, Patara. They didn't do the fusion time, dance. Back then. Blue. Oh, yeah. We're going to have some fun here. We're getting a double Kamehameha! And yeah, I think it's safe to say that that wipes Goku Black away. 
This leaves Trunks' future intact, and Zonosu is trapped away forever, never to be released. That is much better than the one we actually got. And because of all the exertion of the double Kamehameha, Super Saiyan Blue, and the Patara fusion, after about another half an hour when they're all congratulating each other, Goku and Raditz <laughs> then defuse. And what about the gods of destruction and the angels of that future? How do they get revived? Well, that's up to the Grand Priest and Zeno to decide. They can assign their things. That's not Trunks' problem right now. Exactly. He's got a lot to deal with right now. With all of that squared away, Bulma, exactly. Goku, and Raditz head back to the present to tell everyone the good news. But this time, they are solely met by a very confident and snarky looking Vegeta. He Ooh. walks up to the injured Raditz and pats him on the shoulder, saying, You meet me down by the beach tomorrow. Come alone. The brother of Goku doesn't really know what to make of this situation, but he feels that deep down in his Saiyan heart, he knows that he has to do this. After eating a sensu bean and resting up for the night, the day approaches. Vegeta versus Raditz. Don't, don't go alone. Ross, no. Nikon, Muli, and Launch are there to see <sighs> Raditz off for the big battle. Launch pleads with him, saying that he doesn't have to do this. Vegeta's just being a sore loser. Raditz tells her that he has to. Vegeta's pride, the way it's going, it'll keep going on forever and ever. And he will not rest until Raditz fights him. This has to happen. Even though Launch can't understand it, Ranch does get it, being part Saiyan and all that. Mm -hmm. Raditz arrives at the location as promised, and Goku is there too to see the fight in question. Raditz is very concerned whether Vegeta will react to Goku being there, but Goku promises not to interfere and he just wants to watch Good. as a bystander. Well, I mean... He will not interrupt. Vegeta arrives and scolds Raditz for bringing Goku. The prince reluctantly allows this, saying that if that low-class buffoon interrupts, then he will stop at nothing and kill the pair of them. From the side of the beach, a tank-like vehicle rolls up into position. The antenna emits a green-like beam which strikes Vegeta in a direct Blitz hit. Waves. Vegeta laughs out loud, feeling the sensation of the blood's waves working. This is a feeling he remembers very well. His tail grows back, he starts to grow in size, and he lets out a huge roaring laugh. I have found a new power of my own, Raditz! Know your place under your prince! He slowly becomes Uzaru before calming his I mind called down, it. becoming Golden Uzaru, which surprises everybody. We then see, after all the smoke and light clears, Vegeta as a Super Saiyan 4. Goku and Raditz are aghast. This is nothing they've encountered before. They don't recognize the Super Saiyan form at all. The Blutz Wave Cannon, like we saw in GT, is now in this scenario. Why exactly? Well, it's all down to the fact that Bulma designed it thanks to Vegeta's inspiration. And since Vegeta was so angry and so stubborn, Bulma agreed to make this Blutz Wave Cannon in order to shut him up. <laughs> now, most like Toriyama, I'm going to go with what works best dramatically. So we get Vegeta and Raditz going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Goku and Bulma simply watching on. The battle is intense, but Raditz hasn't gone full power yet because he doesn't want to kill Vegeta because this is just a petty fight. They don't have to do this. They can end it and just try and figure things out the normal way. Raditz keeps insisting to Vegeta to just let this all go. Trunks shouldn't have to deal with all of this. This is meant to be peacetime. Vegeta then responds saying that he doesn't care what his son thinks. And oh yeah, he doesn't want that trash of a daughter to be anywhere near his son ever again. Oh, you did not just call Ranch that. He then Bye, lets out a scream that explodes like a supernova. Vegeta's gonna die. He is now raging. The Super Saiyan Blue Aura shocks everyone around. It's bigger than any scene before against Goku Black. He punches Vegeta across the horizon, sending him flying for miles. And while Vegeta's all completely confused, he prepares a god double Sunday, the likes of which has never been seen before. This is a full power attack. But once Vegeta's recovered, he's got an attack of his own. A final shine. The two beams collide and the Saiyans get closer and closer as they try and drive each other to submission. It's getting more intense. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? By the end of it, they are only 10 feet away from each other with Vegeta smirking and laughing, saying, Ah, oh, Raditz, this power is great and ultimate. Yours was not deserved. Mine was. Vegeta lets out one more furious scream and we see an explosion of white light which encompasses everything around them, including mm. Goku and Bulma on the ground. Goku and Bulma fear the worst because they cannot sense any energy from the pair of them. Bulma then pulls out a capture which contains well, a Bulma boat. can't they sense anything out, out to, like sea she... to try and find their no. bodies. After about 20 minutes, they successfully find them and they're barely hanging on to life. Hours pass and Vegeta finally regains consciousness. He has nothing but his thoughts for company until Raditz wakes up, looks over to the prince and smiles. You see, prince? 
It doesn't matter what class you belong to. Any being has the potential to become stronger than what destiny provides them. Anything is possible. Kakarot proved that to you years ago, and I proved it to you today. Vegeta is Damn. He wants to deny it, but deep down, in the heart of hearts, he knows this to be true. Once Vegeta and Raditz have actually recovered, their relationship begins to heal. Sure, they're not going to become friends anytime soon, but they can at least tolerate each other in the same room and work together for once. As for mm. Trunks and Ranch, well, they're allowed to see each other again, and everything is just coming up roses for the pair of them. When they're told the good news, Trunks kisses Ranch on the cheek, and Ranch hugs him back, and with all of that happiness around us, this part ends. So there we have it. Ten parts of the story, and we pretty much reached this conclusion for the time being. But does this mean that the story is over? Oh, absolutely not. But in this part, we did lay down the groundwork for a potentially interesting part 11 in the future. Samasu was contained, future Zeno wasn't brought back, and this could mean that the tournament of power could be changed significantly. Mm. In any case, Vegeta and Raditz's feud has finally been put to rest. After many years of squabbling, they can now finally begin to try That's cool. Together. I like the that. I like how he did that. Completed, and he can That's now cool. A fresh one. So what do you guys think? Did you like this scenario? What kind of side stories would you like to see or hear? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this series. Until the next one, I love sure his like videos, guys. Again, Catch I know I always say it, but thank y'all very much for introducing me to his videos and bringing this to my attention because normally I don't like theory videos and stuff like that, but his, well, his and Swag Kage's, both of their videos are really cool. Those are like the only two theorists that I like now. So thank y'all very much. I really appreciate it. And until next time, peace.